Hi guys and girls, I'm Reef Man, and I wanted to give you a long introduction to reef photography and how I get the video and images that you see here on my channel. I use a Sony A7R Mark III camera body and I shoot my videos in 4K. None of that is really that important though, so let's dive in and see how you can get great photos of your own reef at home. The first choice that you'll have is whether you want to use a camera or a camera phone. Both of these take great pictures and you can get good results, but remember that the best camera in the whole world is the one that you actually already have. Using the latest phones will get you great quality photos that are suitable for sharing online anywhere, but a full camera with an interchangeable lens will give you a whole new level of quality. Using an interchangeable lens camera like this one will give you the option to use a macro lens, something that is gonna make a huge difference in the quality of the photos that you can get. You can buy a used macro lens online for relatively cheap. You can look at KEH, B&H, Adorama, and other places like that for a macro lens that'll fit your camera's mount. Interchangeable lens cameras also allow you to shoot in a format called RAW. And this allows you to do a lot more post-processing once the photo is off the camera to collect things or correct things like color and exposure. So what lens would you get? I would recommend looking around for a lens like this one, 105 millimeter macro lens, something that can do macro photography. This means that the lens will be able to reproduce the image at 100% on the sensor. Most non-macro lenses are going to reduce the image by as much as 75% before it hits the sensor, which means that the details in your photo are gonna be very small and hard to see. A macro lens will also be able to focus on things really close up in front of it. If you don't use a macro lens, you might have issues taking photos of fancy new zoanthids that you put right at the front of your tank. Your lens will likely offer many different apertures as well. This controls how much light will get into the lens and hit your camera's sensor, and a smaller aperture like 2.8 will be wide open and have a very shallow depth of field. You might not want this in your coral photos since only a small part of the coral would actually be in focus. I'd recommend using an aperture above f16 or so to get a good depth of field in your photos. For my channel, I use a 90mm macro lens built by Sony. Right now, for this video, I'm using a 55mm lens, which gives a larger view scope, so you can see more than just my face. If you don't have the budget to get a new or even a used macro lens, you can use something called an extension tube to get the same effect on whatever lens you do have. If you put an extension tube behind a normal lens, it will have the result of magnifying the photo, allowing you to focus much closer than you otherwise would. And it's a great compromise very cheap to buy. Remember though, that extension tubes often prevent your camera from using autofocus, so keep that in mind when you're shopping for one. If you're going to shoot photos of your coral, you need to decide if you want to shoot through the front glass of your tank or from the top down. A lot of coral is much more colorful if you look at it from the top down, and I'd very much recommend that you take your photos from the top of the water instead of through the glass. Of course, this means that you need to keep the surface of your water very still. So turn off all your pumps and let things settle a few minutes before attempting to take photos from over the surface of the water. Both the glass of your tank and the water in your tank will act as a lens, which will reduce the quality of the photos that you get. If you're taking photos from the outside of your tank through the glass, you should ensure that you get your lens as close as possible to the glass and keep it at a 90 degree angle to the glass to reduce the effect that the glass will have on your ability to focus. You will probably need to use manual focus if you're taking a photo this way from outside the tank, as your camera will probably be trying to focus on the glass or rock or anything other than the coral polyp that you actually want the picture of. Autofocus is usually not gonna be your friend when taking photos in fish this way. There are a few companies that make what are basically acrylic tubes that you can attach to your camera and use for underwater photography. And this is how I shoot all the photos and video that you see in my channel, actually using this one right here. I use the extra long Avast Marine top-down portal. The top-down portal comes in two sizes, one for cameras and, well, one, they're both for cameras, one for long lenses and one for short lenses. They're both about $50. And you can actually get a cell phone version like this one 
for about $10 more. And it works just as well and is invaluable for taking photos with your phone. If you use a portal like these, you will eliminate your ability to use manual focus because obviously your lens is in this. You'll find that when the lens is under the surface of the water, autofocus will work a lot better than if it would if you were looking through the water's surface or through the glass of your tank. So you can get away with autofocus. I hope you enjoyed this quick introduction to reef photography. Let me know in the comments what you thought and please share any threads, Flickr accounts, 500 pixel accounts, places you're posting pictures of your tank. I'd love to see them. Thanks, and I will see you next week. Bye.